Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Electric word, life, it means forever. That's a mighty long time. But I'm here to tell you, there's something else. Uh, all right, all right, I'm stealing Prince lyrics for my opening remarks, so sue me. Actually, on second thought, since quite a few of Cedar Rapids' finest law firms are represented in our esteemed audience tonight. Don't sue me. Please. My malpractice is high enough as it is. And I swear her dress was already stained. And I <laughs> Let's just forget it, all right? I'll stop saying Prince lyrics forthwith. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today at Turner Mortuary to celebrate and give thanks for the life of. Uh, but this is no longer a mortuary. What the hell are we doing here? <laughs> well, how much are they paying us? <laughs> You couldn't negotiate at least minimum wage. Well, a box of buck, I guess. And dearly beloved, we are gathered here today at the History Center, which used to be a mortuary, to celebrate and give thanks for the life of, um, the life of, uh, the life of Lincoln Flagstone. <laughs> Linda, Linda Flagstone. What? I can't understand. What? Linda Langston. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, we are gathered here today to give thanks for the life of Linda Langston. And I'd like to start off our services by saying a little something about Linda. Linda was uh, a woman, <laughs> a Caucasian woman. <laughs> now, even though I never met Linda and know nothing about her, I'm fairly certain that this being Iowa and her name being Linda, that, that she was Caucasian and a woman. <laughs> Of course, I'm pulling this out of my ass. Where do you think it's <laughs> Death is inevitable. Death is necessary. It tears on our, at our hearts when it happens. But without death, there could be no birth. Death is the price we pay, each one of us. Doesn't matter if you're rich or um, richer. Uh, <laughs> we all got to ante up. So, come on, Tai How about a little something, you know, for the effort, you know? Thank you very much. <laughs> What my poorly medicated assistant was trying to say is even though death is inevitable, we struggle against it with all our might. When it, come, when it does come, as it has for our esteemed Ms. Langston, we may question our faith or the fairness of the world, but eventually we must accept that death is part of the greatest plan for the universe. This acceptance is hard. It don't come easy. You know it don't come easy. <laughs> Gotta pay your dues if you want to sing the blues, and you know it don't come easy. You don't have to shout or leap about. You can even play them. In. Oh, I just received a tweet from the Mrs. Butterworth Law Firm. Uh, it's not Butterworth, it's Shuttleworth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell kind of name of that, for sure. 
<laughs> it's a tweet, and it says, please be advised that a motion of copyright infringement has been filed against you on behalf of our client and Mr. Richard Starkey, a.k.a. Ringo Starr, with a cease and desist order. <laughs> what can I say? I, I don't even think that's possible. Well, all right, all right, I don't have a cow. I know we have a buttload of testimonials to get through, so, so let's, let's rush on here. Uh, we'll now read through some of the testimonials that have been sent from around the world in honor of Linda Langston. This one comes from our good friend Hillary Clinton. Oh, please check your inbox for my email testimonial. <laughs> Sorry to say we have yet to receive that testimony. <laughs> and then, of course, from your good friend, Donald Trump. <laughs> That's why I gave you the Kleenex. <laughs> he sent a box with a note attached which said, Testimonials are for losers. <laughs> And inside the box was a wild, rabid, orange screech weasel. <laughs> we had it put down, humanely. <laughs> oh, and this one from Jimmy Carter. Now I can finally admit I lusted in my heart for Linda. <laughs> but Dave got there first. <laughs> God bless him. So Linda and I went our separate ways. <laughs> Dave and Linda to be married, and, and then me a few months later to be president. <laughs> all in all, I, I think Dave got the better end of that deal. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Rosalind and I have to go build more houses and laugh at W's paintings. <laughs> And from our honorable Governor Brandstad. <laughs> Linda, I hear with the illness you had that you would have made it, but the hospital denied your Medicaid insurance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go Trump. <laughs> You know, to know Linda is to love, or like, or tolerate Linda. <laughs> and what better person to speak about her quirks and peccadilloes than someone who heard her mouth and had her confidence. So please welcome Linda's analyst. <laughs> Guten Abend. <laughs> I, as many of you may know, am Dr. Jan Jakob Jingleheimer Schmidt, <laughs> psychoanalyst and author of His Name Is My Name Too, <laughs> a study in multiple personality disorder. <laughs> And most recently, the groundbreaking investigation into childhood sexual trauma titled Oedipus Was a Bad Mother. Shut your mouth! I'm just talking about Oedipus. <laughs> the lit majors in the audience liked that one very much. In addition to the authoring of such tomes, I am the practicing therapist helping the patient work through their inner demons and repress emotions, primarily through the use of Freudian analysis, although my wife will say that I am also well young. <laughs> I see some of my, uh, my subjects here tonight, some of, some of the most famous in Cedar Rapids, some are here, and some are in the community, Aaron McWright, of course, with whom I fear I have made very little headway. <laughs> I have spent our last ten sessions locked in an Abbott and Costellian paradox. I ask him how work is, and he says, go CR, and I say, where? And he says, go CR, and I said, where? And then the 50 minutes is up. <laughs> of course, Mayor Corbett is here. 
I have been helping him with the casino envy. <laughs> Even a very small casino can do the job. <laughs> Some of those symptoms may be subsiding, however, because given recent weather patterns, it is likely that the city should be able to get a riverboat, extent, a riverboat casino exemption on 3rd Street Southwest. <laughs> it's a very little problem. And of course, Brad Hart. Yes. I have been counseling Brad Hart for chronic shyness and feelings of inadequacy. <laughs> Don't worry, I told him someday maybe someone will recognize your good works and maybe give you one award. <laughs> and then somebody did. The Lynn County Bar Association gave him their award for good citizenship in 2016. Oh, I did not. Oh, yes. Yes. I did not have the heart to tell him that winning an ethics award from a bunch of lawyers <laughs> what about, was about as hard as being elected the designated driver for nickel shot night at the Irish Democrats. <laughs> no one really wants the job, but anyone who can even remember what a straight line looks like gets it by default. <laughs> Now, normally my sessions with clients would be kept in strictest confidence, but considering this occasion, I thought it would be reasonable to lift the therapeutic veil and to give you a little insight into Linda's psyche. I remember well our first session. I asked Linda what had brought her to psychotherapy, and she told me that her friends had paid for her to come for a Geburtstag present. I found this a little unusual at first, but over time, I came to realize that paying someone to listen to her talk for an hour once a week was essentially a spa day for Linda. <laughs> and for everybody else. <laughs> Needless to say, Linda was a perfect patient for talk therapy. None of you are surprised to hear this. Many of you encouraged me to attempt some shut-up therapy with Linda. <laughs> I explained that first day that talk therapy is intended to improve the mental health and the well-being of the patients, to mitigate troublesome beliefs, compulsions, and behaviors, and to ultimately improve relationships and social skills. Sounds good, Doc, she says. I'm not sure how screwed up you are, but I have all afternoon. <laughs> In our talks, I was able to get up close and personal with Linda. This up close and personal is not a metaphor. It is, I am told, the only way that she knew how to talk. <laughs> if she had got any more up close and personal when we talked, then Eric and Evan would have a half Austrian little brother. <laughs> During these little talks, I was determined to diagnose and to cure Linda Langson's fractured psyche, but where to begin? <laughs> Perhaps I thought Linda was suffering from what might be called the Schwanstücker Mistgunst, how you say, the penis envy. <laughs> this is a common criticism of any woman with political aspirations, that when Eine Frau is so audacious and undaunted as to challenge the political boys club and win, it is only a desperate attempt to compensate for not having Eine Phallus of her own. <laughs> this, she told me, was complete scheisequatch. <laughs> Why do you say this, I ask? I am a woman in government, she said to me. I am surrounded by dicks all day long. 